the kind of environment that you were in, um, a lot of people would actually lose their confidence, right? Yeah. So being in that environment where you're surrounded by uh, non-Muslims who potentially like, you know, are kind of laughing at your faith and, and like not taking it seriously and stuff. So how is it that you kind of made that into confidence rather than a lack of confidence? Mm, yeah, it's, 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 um, that's a, it's a difficult question. Um, but um, I think there's a few factors. I think one, uh, seeing my dad, my, I think my father was very confident as a person and he was quite outspoken. Mm. And sometimes we see our parents, we see qualities in our parents and sometimes it might be pe qualities which we don't necessarily want to emulate, but we can take the good from it, you know? So my dad was very outspoken. He had very outspoken views. He used to kind of, I remember one, one of his views was like in the mosque, he used to always complain like people always, you know, going over our shoulders and jumping over our shoulders. They should make lanes for people, you know, so you know, things like that. And, and people wouldn't always listen to him, but he always used to have these controversial, and he was never afraid to speak his mind. So I think I took a, a bit from that. So that must have given me confidence, seeing him like that and seeing my dad, you know, speaking his mind and, and, and doing things and being a doctor and setting up, you know, he's setting up with GP surgery when, you know, very few people could. Um, so I think that, that was a factor that, that must have been a kind of genetic thing. Um, I think the second thing, when you become practicing, and this is an important part of, you know, be, be, being a Muslim, is that, you know, fear of Allah and, and, and this sense of, you know, especially when you read the seerah and you realize how the Sahaba were, and they obviously had to, be, they, they went through that, right, in the Makkah phase where that they had to kind of hold on to their faith, even though they knew everybody would oppose them. And I think when you're becoming practicing, you're reading that and you're reading about the Quran, you realize that this is part of being a Muslim. Part of being practicing is that you know you're going to get tested. You know you're going to get opposed. So I think that helped me be ready for that, you know. Um, and then thirdly, I think, I think the nice thing about England as a country is that, I, I genuinely believe this, um, is that um, they actually respect you more when you express your own identity. They actually value they, they, they are, it is quite multicultural and like, you know, to the, I mean, even for example, I remember my last big teaching interview, um, I, um, uh, it, you know, it was an outstanding school and I wanted to see if I could get in and, and, and teach at the highest level. And I remember in the interview, what I chose to do, they gave me a choice of what to teach. And I chose a poem called Half Cast by John Agard. And it's like, uh, it's about identity and it's about racism and about how you shouldn't use the term half cast to describe people. And I, and, and I, I, I still remember, I read the poem, it's called, and it starts off like, I'm standing on one leg, they call me half cast, right? And I literally stood on one leg and I did the whole poem. I acted out like a Caribbean, you know, you know I did, I, I acted out. And they, 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 they hired me on the spot because of that. They said, we, the, the, just the sight of a, beard, you know, a bearded practicing Muslim, teaching in that way we had to hire you right you know Amazing. so and, I, and i've experienced that from from a young age that when you are confident when you embrace your culture so for example in high school um when in re lessons i remember i was like the teacher's pet right you know and because i would just talk about islam and i was like oh this is easy i just get 100 percent. i just talk about you know they did they did a uh, they always did the same research essay every year um is religion alive and kicking in preston i think you know 10 years later my brother was there they still did the same thing <laughs> And so when I did that, I was like, yeah, I'll just write about the mosques and I'll write, you know, and I, and I realized that my background, my background as a Bengali, as a Bengali, you know, as a doctor's son, as a Muslim, I had all these different kind of multicultural identities. And rather than seeing them as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a hindrance, actually, well, I've got all these experiences, which these guys don't have. And, and you know, I could write about it even in England I, I, with my own, tut my own students and I tutor a lot of Muslims. I say, look, don't be don't hide your um, background, embrace it, right? When you write about Salwar Kameez and, 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 and Laddus and these things, they don't even know what they are, right? As long as you put it in italics, it's gonna look, oh wow, cultural, you know? It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna look impressive, right? Yeah. And, and, um, and, and so I think I, I realized that, you know, in that environment that if I, you know, show that this beard is my strength, that this is what I believe in, and they respect you more when you stand up for what you believe in. Hmm. It's, it's like authentic, isn't it? It's, it's congruent with you. Um, and, and, and I think when I saw that and experienced it, and, and Alhamdulillah, when you do, do try it, you, you see the results quite quickly, then the confidence builds upon that. You know, you get one success and that, then another success builds upon it, and then it becomes your identity. You realize that, okay, this is who I am. I'm a Muslim, and I, I'm gonna wear this beard whether they like it or not. You know, and, and I'm going to dress this way whether they like it or not. And yeah, they might laugh a little bit at the beginning, but they will grow to respect it. And ultimately, they'll actually, if I don't do that, they might not laugh at me in my face, but they're going to respect me less inside. Mm, great. I mean, it's actually quite interesting because you're saying that 
Um, the thing that usually makes people feel less confident, like, oh my God, I'm a Muslim and no one else is a Muslim. You're saying instead of that being a weakness, that's actually your strength. And if mm. you use that properly, it will make you stronger and it will make you more well-respected, which in turn will probably build even more self-confidence and self-esteem. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Okay, great.